Mr. Satya Lunch. Okay, if we can uh, resume. Yes, please. Ms. Abington, carry on from where we left off. Now, I wanted to... Uh, welcome back, Mr. Singh. Hi. I wanted yes. to just clear up one point that was on my mind earlier. You gave an account of Ms. Khan having been quite distraught uh, on the 3rd of August when she came into your room yes. and uh, asked you, spoke to you about the anecdote. Um, she was already in my room. Uh, I was alerted to her being in my room. Okay. Uh, so on that occasion, uh, I remember you said earlier that you drafted something for her and she went back and she made a clarification. Yeah. Um, I, so I drafted it on my phone. Yeah. Uh, I do, did not draft it in the office. I believe I may have gone back to the chamber and I drafted it. But substan substantively, yes, I, I drafted it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, another point not related to the what I've just asked with you asked you would it be fair to say that for Miss Khan throughout the rest of August after her meeting with you on the 8th right. and for the rest of September barring the period when she was down with shingles right. she was performing her constituency work and attending to her usual engagements and there was nothing unusual about her performance uh, there was no reason for me to conclude otherwise all right thank you I think we also have to remember there was some, uh, uh, I wouldn't say, uh, like I would maybe call it a temporary stoppage because of the evolving uh, COVID situation. So yes. uh, yeah, there, but were, there were points in time where we ceased house visits, for example, and stuff like that. Yes, That's across the board. I'm saying that's right, that's for right. Ms. Khan in particular. It it done, right? um, yes, all the MPs would have been under those instructions, for example, yes. to, all the WP MPs to see. And there was nothing things. unusual about Ms. Khan's performance or attitude or whatever she was expected to perform or do as a member of parliament, she did? Um, she was, she's not an active, compared to the other WP MPs, uh, she's not as active as some of the others are. Uh, so, for example, there were uh, speed, there were a number of bills, I believe, that came up in October. Uh, she doesn't speak very much on these bills. And to the extent that uh, it was that sort of performance, uh, yes, mm -hmm. that, that continued. But on the 27th of September, mm -hmm. she volunteered to you that she would like to seek fit feedback on a speech that she had made in support of the women's motion and wanted to see whether there's any basis to find common ground, work with parties on the ground, and uh, approach you for that. 27th of September? September. I, I would have to look at my records. To okay, you might want to check that. and let us know if that's not your recollection. Sure. But if that's correct, I mean, it would demonstrate that she was A, proactive, at least on this incident, and B, she was thinking forward as to what she should be doing, and generally performing her duties as a member of parliament. Which incident, sorry, you're referring I'm to? I'm talking incident. about the occasion when she wrote to you and said she would like to seek feedback on a speech that she made for the purposes of finding common ground, building consensus. I'd have to have a look at that before I say something conclusive about it. I can present the evidence to the committee if I know where that communication was made to me. Okay. Or you can bring it <coughs> to my attention if she's already submitted it to the committee. Can you look at... Uh, you were shown earlier Ms. Khan's submission. I just use it as a reference point, see whether you remember, because it's a message to you. So if you please pick up Ms. Khan's bundle. There are two bundles here. I didn't know the three bundles, yeah. Um, uh, which bundle, uh, Mr. Tong? Um, from Miss Khan, dated 7 December. Okay, I have okay. that here. Could you please direct me to the relevant Please turn page? to the very first page. Okay. You will see, I think, your name appear on the top. Yes. That's her exchange of messages with you. Mm -hmm. So if you just have a quick look at uh, 27th of September, this is where it starts, uh -huh. and you see that uh, around 
two ten p.m. She said to you, "I reached out to so and so for a chat and CC Faisal. I'd like to reach out to someone, as well, if you think it's a good idea." What do you plan to raise and discuss? You asked. I'd like to speak about the speech I made in support of the women's motion, get the feedback, and see if perhaps we can have common ground and work on building the relationship. So uh, she's following up on the speech that she wrote, and she's asking you for your views. Do you recall me, this? Uh, let me check what because you said. Okay. Yeah. Let me check what predates this because I may have well sent her a message to ask her to speak to uh, uh, Malay Muslim groups about the feedback to her speech because I did the same for my mosque chairman mm. uh, just to understand uh, what the reception was to what she had said. So I, I'll have to check whether she initiated this or I initiated this. But regardless, and mm -hmm. I think it's actually better if you initiated it, regardless, you thought that she was capable of handling her duties as a member of parliament. I think to... Given the fact that she was messaging me, yes. 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 In fact, as as you said, it might even have been because you thought she yeah, was able exactly, to do this and exactly. you, you initiated it, right? right. Okay. Now, I'd like to go now to what happened in August. We spoke about that okay. on various occasions earlier, but I'd like to now go into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Now, she... I think we've got the timeline from you, so I'll see whether we can move quickly on this, okay? 3rd August, she made the speech, yes. right? 7th August, she had a call with you, and yes. she owned up to her lie in right. Parliament. 8th August, there was a meeting at your home with That's Mr. Right. Faisal and Miss Lim. Okay. 7th August, 7th August, mm -hmm. was it a long conversation? Uh, no, it wasn't very long. You said it ended up, it ended with you sort of giving her a short shift and yes. hung up. Right? Yes. Uh, it wasn't... Uh, the beginning was really me uh, badgering her about coming up with uh, what actually happened, what really happened, because she wasn't keen on revealing anything. Okay. Now, on the 8th of August, mm -hmm. how was that meeting initiated? Uh, the meeting was... Uh, to discuss, of course, the also there was feedback from the speech that she had given, and uh, I had arranged with uh, Faisal and Sylvia to come to my house and talk about that. I, I left to check exactly what time that meeting was arranged, uh, and then on the morning itself, on the eighth of August, I, I believe I reached out to Raisa and and told her to come to my to my place, and she replied quite quickly because I suspect she knew what I was going to talk about. Prior to the meeting itself, mm -hmm. did you discuss with Ms. Lim and Mr. Faisal the confession that Ms. Uh, Khan gave you? No, I did not. So uh, as of the no. 8th of August, yes. uh, prior to the meeting, mm -hmm. Ms. Lim and Mr. Faisal were not aware uh, they were, of, I may of have, the falsehood? Uh, I may have mentioned something to Ms. Lim on the 7th, but uh, I can't remember exactly uh, what it was, but certainly the... Uh, definitely not to Mr. Faisal. Uh, but um, I'm also not sure whether I, I shared it with Miss Lim because it, all I knew at that point was she had lied. Uh, why she had lied, what the circumstances were, I didn't know. By can, the end of the phone Can call you check your text messages and see sure. how this uh, was communicated? Uh, just give me... Well, how what was communicated, sorry? How this occasion was communicated, how okay. the meeting was set up, okay. what you told them, what was discussed, anything from the 7th and 8th and anything arising therefrom in relation to this issue. Okay. 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 Now, can you give us an account of this meeting in summary, beginning from the time when Ms. Khan arrived? And at that time, who was there? How did the meeting proceed? Right. What was discussed? Who spoke? Who raised what? And uh, how was it responded to? Right. Uh, as... Five. So my memory serves me. Miss Khan comes to my place. I think the time is eleven, but my text messages will confirm. Um, I think my daughters are playing, running around, uh, and um, so we move to the dining table. We sit there, and then uh, Raisa says, "Can you ask your girls to go up?" Uh, you know, then they go up, and then uh, uh, whether that happened before, I asked. Uh, Raisa, you have something to share with us? And Sylvia, uh, Faisal, myself, we were there. She was there. And then she gets very emotional. She starts crying straight away. And the first thing she says, the first thing I remember at least that she said was, you know, when I was 18 years old, I was... 
And uh, then, uh, of course, we're shocked to hear this. Uh, we're very shocked to hear this. Uh, and uh, then she explains that it's because of that condition, that, that episode that uh, she faced. Uh, she, it was very traumatic for her. And because it was very traumatic for her, she uh, told the untruth in Parliament uh, because she feels strongly about, uh, uh, you know, issues of sexual assault. And arising from there, she um, she did what she did in Parliament. Uh, that was the gist of it. Uh, the, there was also another. That actually, that part of the meeting wasn't very long. I think we felt sympathetic. We felt sympathy to her. I. I remember distinctly asking her, so who else knows about this um, that occurred uh, when you were 18 years old? And she said, my husband knows, um, Yudish knows, Paying knows, and my therapist knows. And when she said my therapist knows, I was um, relieved somewhat because at least there's somebody there who she can turn to and seek advice and the appropriate counsel from uh, with okay. regard to what she is uh, uh, facing. Uh, and the conversation actually was very short, and I told her, I said, you'll have to speak to your parents about this. Um, and, and and she said, okay. And uh, then uh, it was very, I mean, she was just crying and crying, and, and you know, uh, that's where we left it. So arising from this meeting, in your mind, there was no doubt that she had told you, Ms. Lim and Mr. Faisal, that she lied in Parliament. Yes. And you must have appreciated that one reason she told this to you and Mr. Faisal and Ms. Lim was because she sought guidance and counsel uh, from she the never, three of you. She didn't put it that way. She, I, because you have to remember on the 7th, uh, this was literally forced out of her over the phone call. Yes, but in this context... Mm -hmm. She's coming forward. Mm -hmm. She's made a confession mm -hmm. about a lie in Parliament. Mm -hmm. It's a serious matter, which I think you'll agree. In this context, wouldn't it be reasonable to assume, for her to assume, that the three most senior members of the Workers' Party would give her guidance? Um, I believe we did, and my guidance to her was to speak to your parents about it, because in my mind, uh, this would have to be corrected in Parliament, but before we can even... Did you tell her that? Sorry? Did you tell her that? No, not on that day. Not Why on not? That day. It, I think at that point, given her condition, given her state, it was more important for me to tell her, look, speak to your parents. And when she left uh, my place, I did tell her, we'll have to deal with this issue, but speak to your parents first. I told her that. So, Mr. Faisal, did he say anything to her about the lie? Uh, and I'm focused on the lie. I'm really not sure specifically for Mr. Pfizer, but I, I think he had some questions to ask her about uh, therapy. And because he's a counsellor, and, and I, I think he may have asked her some questions, but I don't recall exactly what those but questions were. But did Mr. Faisal discuss with her what to do with the lie and how to clarify it? Uh, not, that I can, not that I can recall. Right. Did Ms. Lim do so? Uh, not that I can recall as well. Because generally the, the, the flavour of that meeting was there was a lot of pity for her. Okay. So the re your recollection was that there was no substantive discussion yes, on what to do, right. and that's there was correct. certainly no instruction or directive by you to her to clarify the lie? Uh, so no. Right. No, there was not. And in fact, Mr. Faisal told us yesterday that after Ms. Khan confessed about the lie in Parliament, the focus was on her well-being and her experience as a sexual assault victim, and that there were no other discussions on the lie in Parliament. That would be correct, because we were more focused on her well-being and given the state that she was in. Right. So, she walked out of your home thereafter. Okay, maybe I'll back up a little bit. Mr. Faisal also told us that thereafter, she had composed herself and was able to discuss with him, and perhaps with you as well, the statement that she was supposed to put out to clarify the speech that she had made in Parliament. Uh, that's right. There was another um, uh, matter that was the subject of the meeting that we were having. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, uh, the, it was quite, there were quite a lot of things to go through as well. Uh, and uh, so we went through those and I told her to draft okay. your statement and then um, 
send it to either myself or Faisal. I'll have to check. So, from what I understand from you, the thrust of the meeting was in relation to her talking about her sexual assault experience. Mm -hmm. Mr. Faisal may have asked some questions about mm -hmm. this from his perspective as a counsellor. Yes. There was some discussion on the statement that she was going to put out concerning the Malay Muslim speech that she had made That's two right. days ago. Right. And that was the thrust of the meeting. That's right. Those were there the was, two thrusts. As far as you can recall, there was no landing point on what to do with the lie in Parliament. Uh, specifically as to the lie in Parliament, uh, in my mind, she had to speak to her parents first. And no, we... not in your mind. What yeah. did you tell her? Speak to your parents. That was very clear. Tell me in... Uh, as... As far as you can recall the words, tell me what you said to her and in using I, what words. I told her uh, you'll have to speak to your parents about this issue. Uh, and I don't think it went beyond that. But as she left my house, I told her we'll have to deal with this issue, but speak to your parents first. So I, I basically recall repeating that to her. All right. And so she left the home after that? Yes, yes, she did. And uh, would I be correct to say that thereafter there was... No other communication with that is Ms. Khan. Right. That's the evidence. On the lie. That's right. That's the evidence that I've right. given. And that would be the case all the way until the 3rd of October. Uh, yes. Right? That's because right. you told me the only other occasion was 1st October email. No, that's right. Uh, but that, that, that email wasn't about the lie. It yes, was about it was conduct. something in general, but yeah. in the sequence of events, you ascribed some weight to that. That is right? correct. So the next time you spoke to her at all about the lie was on the 3rd of October. That's right. Now... As of the time she left your home on the 8th of August, mm -hmm. she had, again, looking at the event, as I understand it from yourself, from Mr. Faisal, she had come. There was a traumatic experience. She mm -hmm. recounted it. Mm -hmm. She also told you that there was a lie in Parliament, which mm -hmm. was also traumatic and a difficult experience. And you as a senior member of the party, and I think that must be the case for Mr. Faisal and Ms. Lim as well, that must have been something that you were focused on as being an issue that had to be resolved. It had to be resolved in the, con in the context of uh, dealing with uh, someone who has suffered from a uh, traumatic episode. I, I understand who, your point who, about the context, yeah, but yeah. a lie had to be sorted out. Because as you that's, said, that's the clear. untruth cannot be left on the record. That, that's right? clear. That, that, would have to be, right. that would have had to have been dealt with. Okay. But it is also your evidence that she left your home without any specific direction or instruction as to what to do with the lie, right? That, that's, uh, she left my home with a direction to speak to her parents and that we'll deal with this issue we would, we would have to deal with this issue. That yes. was that was without any time frame, right? Without any time frame. That yes. is correct. So she would would be fair for her to leave with the impression that you're not particularly concerned. Uh, no. About the lie. No, absolutely. I, I, I struggle to think how she would make that conclusion. Because Besides the few words that were spoken, mm -hmm. and I heard from Mr. Faisal, he didn't say a word mm -hmm. to her about the lie. Mm -hmm. We'll hear from Ms. Lim. Not much was said by you, and there was no specific direction as to what to do. No time frame. Mm -hmm. Besides, uh, that, that, besides speaking to her parents, that was your only instruction. Uh, by, in my view, it was when I say speak to your parents, uh, I was concerned that to tell her straight away, you've got to come up with the truth and all that. Uh, it would rattle her. Okay. And so in my view, uh, it was important for her to speak to her parents at her time. Uh, and uh, because that would be a condition precedent to coming up front in Parliament. They, well, would have to be, they would have to know what had happened to her, which led her to let, tell this lie in Parliament. Can I just clarify, what exactly did you say? Uh, speak so to, I told her to speak to her parents. The second part, was it articulated? It was articulated as she was as she was leaving my house. I remember that quite clearly. Articulated that she should speak to her parents. She should speak to her parents and that we would have to resolve this issue. So you said that to her? Yes, I said that to her. But you also had confirmed earlier that there was no time frame. That is and correct. there was no specific direction or instruction. Right. And as I just heard from you, you also said it was not appropriate time for you to tell her, got to speak the truth and so on. That's right. Uh, it, that was my in view of her, how okay. she reacted to telling us why she told the lie. Okay. So we heard, we know what happened now on the 8th of August. Mm -hmm. We also heard what happened on the 3rd of 
October in some detail before mm-hmm. the break earlier. On neither occasion did you tell her that she has to tell the truth in Parliament, in those words, correct? On the 3rd of October, I yes, I gave my evidence earlier. Yes. That evidence is on record. That's right. And now on the 8th of August, same. You also for, for didn't sure. tell her. Certainly. So you didn't. No, let me finish so that the transcript can pick mm-hmm. it up. You also didn't tell her on the 8th of August that she should come and tell the truth in those words. Not on the 8th of August. Right. But it was, uh, in my view, uh, by telling her to speak to her parents and that we would have to resolve this issue, it would be very clear that this issue would have to be dealt with. Right. Now, you, you probably remember this or you've seen this, but let me ask you to look at the Ms. Khan's account. Mm-hmm of what happened okay, um, at the meeting. Yeah, if I may invite you to please pick up uh, 2nd of December. Okay. And turn, please, to page 87. Okay. Do you have it? Yes, I do. 80, 87, did you 87, say? 87, yeah. Yes, yes. So, again, uh, please just cast your eye over it so that I don't have to read it. No problem. You're at Mr. Pritam Singh's house. <laughs> On this occasion, Ms. Lim, Mr. Manam also present. And then I asked her, did you put it in clear terms to them as well, that the statement you had made was false? Answer, yes. Could they have misunderstood? No, they could not. And then you see the next line, what was their reaction to this? She says, it was incredible disappointment. There was a lot of anger, but I think there was some compassion as well. Compassion there as well. The reaction was that if I were not to be pressed, then the best thing to do would be to retain the narrative that I began in August. Would you agree with this? Completely disagree. And I said, let me understand the last statement. You said if you are not going to be pressed, then you will retain the narrative that you started in August. Answer, yes. It means if you can get away with it, we don't need to clarify the lie, correct? This is An- you putting it yes, to her. Yes, that's me, right, yes. Right, right. Answer, I think in the simplest terms, yes, you are correct. So again, let me pause there. Would you agree with this? I completely disagree. Are you saying this didn't happen? I'm saying it is completely untrue and it's a lie. Next question. And so the Workers' Party leadership was present there. Their initial reaction to being told that there was a lie or falsehood said in Parliament was to try and duck the issue, if possible. And if it doesn't come up, then the truth may not be told eventually, correct? Answer. I have to say, though, that Pritam Singh's initial response was that I should go to the Committee of Privileges. But after discussions and me explaining the circumstances that led me to the information in the first place, that changed. Let me pause again at this juncture. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. There was no discussion that I recall on the Committee of Privileges. So you at did that not point. tell her, even initially, that she should go to the Committee of Privileges? Not at that point. Not at that point? Certainly not. The Committee of Privileges, I don't know how she recollects this on the 8th of August, but that discussion did not okay. take so place because her condition was. Well, Committee well, she of Privileges was not in the condition. Then came up at which point? Since you say not at that point. Um, I can't remember exactly when. But certainly on the 1st of October in my email to all the Workers' Party members, uh, Workers' Party members of Parliament, I did mention uh, quite clearly that if you can't substantiate something, you will go to the Committee of Privileges. Okay. Then I pick up the point again and I said, so the upshot of the meeting a few days after 7 August, at that point in time, we weren't sure what date of the meeting it was, but now we know it's on 8th of August. So the reference to the meeting in this question should be to the 8th of August meeting at your home. Uh, Mr. Tong, I beg your pardon. Uh, sorry, where are you at now? Are you still at the bottom of 87? Yes, the bottom of 87. Okay. And I'm trying to explain to you that the reason why I framed the question in that way was because Ms. Khan wasn't sure what date exactly it was at this point in time. Okay, oh, you're explaining. Or at least I wasn't sure. So I Okay, okay. Oh, I this meeting was certainly on the 8th, 8th of August. 8th of August, yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah. So I said the upshot of the meeting a few days after 7 August was that the Workers' Party leadership decided that there will be no need to clarify the position. They will keep the lie in place since if you're not pressed, there's no need to clarify the truth. Correct? Answer, correct. You would disagree with that? Oh, absolutely. Now, we'll go over the page. I asked her whether there were emails ex- or messages exchanged which mm-hmm. might corroborate the meeting. And Mr. Uh, uh, Ms. Khan said to me over the page, did you discuss this with Ms. Lowe thereafter? Yes, I did. In those discussions, did you give an account of what happened? Yes, I did. Would that be my messages? Yes, that would be my messages. And those messages would capture the thrust of what you had discussed with Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap, and Ms. Lim. Answer, yes. Now I told her she's making a note to get copies. 
And I said these messages would have been contemporaneous, meaning they would have been roughly the same time as when you concluded the meeting with the three of them. Answer, yes. And subsequent to this uh, occasion, she furnished her messages. At the time that these questions were being asked, I had not seen those messages. Now, I'd like to show you the message. Yes, please. If I may. We have this little bundle from Ms. Lowe earlier. Thank you. Yes. And can you please go to the second page of that thin bundle? Um, yes, I'm at that page. Okay. I, it's not paginated. So the second page, uh, you see two messages. Okay. The, the second okay. one is titled 8 August. You see that? No, I'm on the wrong page then. Yes, I see that. Okay. And it says it's from Raisha. And uh, let me tell you that this is uh, sent on a group chat where Mr. Nathan and Miss Lowe are also present. I understand. And she says, Hey guys, I just met with Pritam, Sylvia and Faisal and we spoke about the Muslim issues and the police accusation. I told them what I told you guys and they've agreed that the best thing to do is to take the information to the grave. They also suggested that I write a statement to send out this evening. Now, I know you've not seen, you have not seen this message contemporaneously, meaning at that time, but now you've seen her recollection of the meeting that she sent out contemporaneously. Mm -hmm. Would this be accurate? It would be highly inaccurate. It is a complete lie. They, let's break down this statement. Mm -hmm. First of all, there was a meeting on the 8th of August. Absolutely. Which ended shortly before this message was sent at 12.41pm, correct? I would, I would think so. From your recollection? Probably. Okay. And she then steps out and she sends a message with four sentences. Mm -hmm. The first says, I just met with Pritam, Silva and Faisal. That's correct, right? Mm-hmm. The second is that we spoke about Muslim issues and a police accusation. That's also correct, right? That is correct. The third sentence, I told them what I told you guys, and they've agreed that the best thing to do is to take the information to the grave. The second half of that sentence, you would disagree with, I assume. Yeah, because I don't know what the first half of the sentence is, and the second half is a complete lie. Okay. The, third, uh, the, the final sentence, they also suggested that I write a statement to send out this evening, is correct. Right? It is correct. So... Most of this message is correct, but her recollection of what she was told to do by the three of you as a result of the lie is inaccurate. Absolutely. Okay. I would go much further than inaccurate. Okay. Can, can I ask you why you think Ms. Khan might lie like this, emerging from a meeting with you? Okay. Um, I know something which she revealed to the Workers' Party Disciplinary Panel on the 29th of November, which is quite telling to me. And uh, she, told, she told the panel that she suffers from disassociation. Now, it was the first time I heard of it. I asked her what disassociation was. She said, it's when I talk without thinking. And I asked her... Uh, don't you think that's dangerous for an MP? And she said, yes. So I'm not bringing this up to suggest anything untoward. All I'm suggesting is it may be helpful for this committee to call for some psychiatric report or evaluation on Ms. Khan. I say that only with the knowledge of what she shared with me on the 29th of uh, November. Could it be a lie to me? It's possible, but... Yes. If we're talking about culpability and how much she, and proportionality, I think it may be helpful. Well, I, but, I think... But, but things do add up now as I, uh, you know, hear what was said in the papers and what yeah. representations she gave and what she shared with you, you uh, see, Mr. the Singh, committee. I, Mr. Singh, I, I, this took place on the 8th of August. Yes. And I was very careful before I started this line of inquiry to yes. ask you if you thought that there was anything untoward, unusual about Ms. Khan as a performance, I, I, as an MP. No, no, no that's MP. not your question. Yeah, if that you check back, you earlier. asked me, a sp that, that's earlier, but yes. the, immediately earlier. before yes, you asked me what was my view of this message. Yes, uh, I did, message. but yes. when I started this afternoon, before yes. after the break, I right. did ask you about her general performance and I think you told me that there was nothing that came to your attention which suggested that there was anything unusual about her performance. No, 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 of course, right? of course. But you're asking me about this particular message yes, now. Yes, and I'm... Uh, yes, I am, but I'm now 
asking you to recall that I did start this afternoon's I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not disputing that. Yes. And so your answer was that she was normal. She was nothing unusual. No, uh, vis-a-vis what you asked me on the 27th, uh, on the, vis-a-vis that message of the 27th of September, that's my answer, yes. And I also asked you about her performance generally. It was, there was nothing out of the ordinary to me. Okay. So, I'm not sure it's fair to characterize what she told you on the 29th of uh, Chair, October. Chair, I, I, I seek your indulgence. No, let me finish. I think the question needs to be read out by Mr. Tong to me again so I can be given a chance to explain why I answered it the way I did. Because it was an open-ended question and I, you asked me what... No, I... What, why, let, she let could have, why she would have said that. Let me, let me and finish. I know certain facts that I know now yeah, let and me I finish. believe I'm entitled to share that. Mr. So, Singh, let me finish. I asked you a question and I said... Why do you think, why it is you think she might lie? And yes. you offered us what happened on 29th. Indeed. And I'm saying to you that in the context of the circumstances that I see, and I can't speak for my members, my colleagues on this committee, in the context of what I see, evidence that you have given, right. I'm not sure that the event that you mentioned on the 29th of October, or November rather, I beg your pardon, is basis for us to call for a psychiatric assessment of Ms. Khan. I can only and and, and uh, I'm bringing that across to you, and I don't think it is appropriate for us to have that debate now. I'm not having a debate about okay. it. I am just replying the the question you. And I really think it is quite inappropriate to bring that up and suggest for this committee to seek a psychiatric assessment of Ms. Khan. Mr. Tong, you asked me for my view. I've given my view. What you decide is the committee's prerogative. I've just put my view across. I, I have this evidence. I I, I think I know this knowledge. I. She told it to me, Ms. and I'm sharing Singh, it with the committee. I think we know why you raised that suggestion, and I think it is not appropriate. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tong, we, I have notes. What you want to believe and what you want to take into account is your prerogative. You ask me a question, why? Oh. And I've given an answer. Okay. You don't want to deal with it, you want to ignore it, that's your call. Let's come back to this. Yes, please. This is a message in writing. Yes. Anything that she told you... Not to you, me, eh? Yes, anything that she might have told you, which gave rise to what you might have concluded on the 29th of November, concerns speaking without thinking, in uh, your words. I, I think that's what she said, yes. I'm not changing that. Okay. But so here, she stepped out of the meeting same thing, with you. My view. In, stepped out of the meeting with you in August. She put her thoughts down in writing and sent it to her two closest associates. Yes. Right. Let me suggest to you that there really is no reason for her to lie to them, <laughs> correct? On what basis do you make that suggestion? Because she, by now, has confessed to you, mm-hmm. to Miss Lim, mm-hmm. to Mr. Faisal. Mm-hmm. She knows that, according to you, it has to be clarified. Yes. So, and she's also confessed it to Mr. Nathan and Miss Lo, mm-hmm. and sought counsel from them as to what to do. Mm-hmm. So why would she go to the senior leadership of Workers' Party and then lie in a closed forum to her own associates who are helping her about your reaction? Uh, Mr. Tong, how would that help her? Mr. Tong, I cannot answer how it would help her. I can only tell you what she told us in what I told her, what was communicated in my house on the 8th of August. And this rendition of what has happened is a complete utter fabrication. It's a lie it's okay. a bare lie. I, I understand. I, I understand your position. but It's my evidence. Yes, I understand your position. I'm trying to understand why this might be so. Okay? You so, are asking the wrong person because I've told you that well, it's a lie. See, when you look at contemporaneous evidence and circumstances, what people were discussing at that time, around that time, after that time, you can get a picture. Uh, not necessarily. Not if people lie. Well, of course. So we're here to work out what the truth is. Mm-hmm. And I hope you will assist us. I have been doing so for the last six hours. <laughs> yes, sure. Or make it seven. Almost Coming seven. to seven. I appreciate that. So, objectively, okay, and I know you disagree with the contents, and I have that as a caveat. Objectively, this conveys to Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lowe a very clear picture of what she is to do with the lie, correct? To the extent that it's communicated to them, yes. Yes. And the objective interpretation of this is not to bring up the issue anymore. If you can avoid it, 
take it to the grave means mm-hmm. don't disclose it mm-hmm. correct that would be on a, on a plain reading yes so again bearing in mind that this was sent minutes barely minutes after she left the meeting would it not reflect an accurate contemporaneous record of her take away from the meeting i would argue that it is it is an inaccurate record of the meeting because you didn't tell whether her it's contemporaneous of course it's a it is contemporaneous yes. by virtue of the time but it says nothing about the fact that it's a lie but she walks away from the meeting not being she was not told by you to go and tell the truth uh, mr tong i i can continue this exchange with you but here i'm dealing with someone who on record has lied to me i have whatsapp communication of her lying to me about the episode uh, if you're trying to impress upon me that this is the truth i'll have to tell you sir sorry that's not the case no mr singh she I... has lied before she's lied about this episode she had to be pressed for it to come out and you are trying to impress on me that she's got no reason to lie because it's contemporaneous no i and i disagree vehemently not 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 because it is contemporaneous the contemporaneity is one factor but you know there is a reason why i understand that you had to press her for to come clean on the fact that she could not substantiate her speech what would that reason be and she made a speech and of course she was worried i mean the leader of a party was asking her and she was worried she held it back no she had to tell the truth yes here is a different scenario she's communicating it to her associates people who she's close with and who's helping her and she knows that they are helping her they have her interests at heart mm-hmm. so i'm trying to understand why it is that in that scenario she would want to lie to them because i can't work out how that helps her she may have a problem unless you are saying that almost 4 months ago or more than 4 months ago she contemplated that this very scenario might happen when she was put under an inquiry i don't need to say that i'm just suggesting to you that this is no, not no, please true don't cut me off. sorry i apologize for cutting you off surely you're not suggesting that she had foreseen what would happen months down the no, road no i'm not making that suggestion i'm not making this. that no. okay good so the only other reason is that in your words she may have a problem yes do you genuinely think that looking back at this entire episode from her behavior right from the point where she had to put the speech on the platform that we share the anecdote is not there it's suddenly inserted from her as from her sms which is clearly to me a lie and before that hiding the truth and attempting to cover a lie with another lie uh i'm afraid so sir you remember i told you that two days after this meeting on the 10th of august you had a meeting with mr nathan and miss lo sorry the uh, which meeting with the ten- on the 10th of you august? had a meeting with mr nathan and miss lo uh huh right when on what day 10th of august yes you recall i told you that earlier yes you did yes. if you look at the chats mm-hmm. miss and i showed you this earlier mm-hmm. miss khan was aware that they were meeting you on the 10th of august uh, i i'm not sure but you if it's on it? the chats i'll take your i'll take your if it's on the chats we don't have to go through it i'll take your word for it no, I, I, because that's not uh, public to me I I like to show it to you again. Sure, you pick do. up the big bundle of the chats between Mr. Nathan, Miss Low and Miss Khan. Which page are we on? Page 36. We we saw this earlier but I want to refresh your memory. Okay? So mm-hmm. this is a group chat. Yes. 10th August. Mm-hmm. Have you decided what have you decided if you want us to tell Pratham? We are meeting him in 30 minutes. She says I told him already. So I think it wouldn't matter if you brought it up and so on. You remember I read this to you? Yes, I remember this. Okay. So I know you're not part of this chat, but this tells us a few things. Mm-hmm. One, they speak to each other and they keep each other informed. Number 
Miss Khan is aware that Mr. Nathan and Miss Lo were meeting with you mm -hmm. on that morning. That's right. And number three, they were quite open in saying that they were she was prepared for you to discuss the issue with Pritam, which is you. The issue meaning the falsehood in Parliament. That's right. She says, so, I have told him already. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, in this context, in this context, Ms. Khan knows mm -hmm. that her close associates will be meeting with you right. to discuss the issue right. that concerns her falsehood. She will not be there. Is it inconceivable that she could think she could lie to them about what you said to her, knowing that you will now be meeting with them to discuss this very same issue? Well, indeed, it would be inconceivable. I would think it is something that she ought to know that I would never accept a MP, a WP MP saying that uh, you take a lie to a grave. Uh, but again, this is Ms. Khan's recollection to them, to the ex I don't believe anything in those chats go into the statement that Ms. Khan tells them again about the lie. Because uh, if I look at page 36, all that is said is, uh, he looks at me different now, but I think he empathizes why I lied. And then Paying has a not a smiley, a, a sad face emoji, uh, not an emoji, just the semicolon yes. thing. Uh, Thank uh, you. But you see, the point, us, sorry? The, the point is this: yes. that they are quite open with each other. Miss Khan tells yeah. them she has told you that right. she has lied. Which chat is this, and why is uh, the other point not in this chat? This twelve forty one chat. I beg your pardon. No, please, please keep to what I'm. I'm no, no, I'm no. I'm, 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 I'm very interested in this because. This is a chat on the 9th if you of... Tell, if you tell me what you're after, I'll, I'll help you. No, I'm trying to understand then in what context is this chat and the earlier message that Ms. Khan sends to them because I don't see that... Ah, uh, let, me, let me help you and uh, let yes. me explain. We initially got this, which I showed you, mm -hmm. but we subsequently wanted the entire context of the right. conversation to understand right. the flavour. And so what you have now in front of you, which you are flipping... Yes. is that context. And if you go to page 23, you will see that same message recorded at 8th of August, 12.41pm. Right. So uh, it is there. what time, sorry? 12.41pm. Yes. Okay. And then there's uh, everything which is redacted. Yes. Thereafter, uh, Raisa says, talks about... Mr. 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 Singh. About, yes. You, you asked me a question okay. and I showed you. Yes. Okay. yes. Now, I want to go back to my questions, okay. if you don't go mind. Ahead. Okay. So please go back to page 36. Sure. The point I'm making to you is that Ms. Khan is quite open to her two associates. Yes. That she lied. She told you she lied. Right. She knows that you're meeting them to discuss the very same issue. Mm -hmm. They asked whether you want us to tell Pritam or discuss with Pritam. And she says, I think it wouldn't matter if you brought it up. She was quite open. Mm -hmm. If she had, just two days prior to this, told her two associates a lie about what you told her to do. Yes. She would not be as open with them. Look, I cannot, yeah, I cannot speak for Ms. Khan, but I cannot also understand this uh, behaviour on the part of uh, Ms. Khan then later to say, uh, uh, let me just quote from page uh, 36. Uh, what was his reaction like? He looks at me different now. It doesn't still change the point that she makes this statement. Paying and Yudish don't interrogate me with that. They don't tell me, look, this message has been sent to us by Raisa. Is it true or not? Yeah. That's not in my communication yeah. with them. And, and, I don't, and I don't disagree. I, mean, I have no basis to disagree right. with you on that, right? So, as I started by saying to you, I appreciate that you didn't see this contemporaneously, right. right? But what I'm trying to now put across to you is the circumstances in which this is now being discussed right. between Raisa, Ms. Mm -hmm. Khan, and her two close associates. Mm -hmm. And they are well aware that she's confessed to you that she lied. Mm -hmm. She is well aware that the two of them are meeting you and expecting that. expecting that this issue will come up. You're talking about paying and, uh, yes. paying and uh, Yiddish. Yes. Right. Expecting that the issue will come up. Right. This is both and, of... And Miss Khan right. is saying to them, speak to him in her, in, right. in her words. Uh -huh. I think it wouldn't matter if you brought it up. Yeah. And so did they. The fact of the matter, Miss Mr. Singh, is that you did discuss with them that you knew 
that she had lied in Parliament. I knew she had lied in Parliament, yes. yes. And that was what was the subject matter of what was discussed. Not so much the 1241 message from 8th of August. So what they did discuss with you was that Mr. That Ms. Khan had lied in Parliament and that you were aware. Correct? That would have been accurate. But okay. at no point did either of them point out to me that there was an instruction to take this to the grave. And I noticed that wasn't queried of them. Okay. And I have no reason to disagree with you because they didn't tell me that they brought it to your attention. All right? So I, I'm trying to give you as much of the relevant evidence surrounding the issue as possible so that you have a yes. clear picture. No, no. Okay. Thank you. Now, on the 10th of August, this meeting that we have seen references to in the chats, you did meet with Paying and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Lowe and Mr. Nathan. And I'd like you to look at Mr. Nathan's account of that meeting. Sure. If you could please pick up the bundle, 3rd December. But yes, I have it. And uh, please turn to... Just give me a moment. 3rd December. Page 32. Uh, yes, I'm at page 32. So at page 32, uh, you go from the top, you see a reference to Mr. Yudhishthira Nathan? Uh, yes. So what happened was that I was informed by Ms. Lowe that Mr. Pritam Singh had wanted to meet the two of us on 10th August. Right? But the thing is, I hadn't told us why he wanted to meet and so on. Then he says, mm -hmm. but it actually turned out that when we met Mr. Singh, the main purpose of the meeting was to discuss another party matter, completely unrelated, which he wanted our input on. But on the sidelines of the meeting of that meeting, we did discuss Ms. Khan having essentially told us that having come clean. What does that mean, having come clean? Having come clean, in a sense, admitted that she lied. Having admitted that she lied in Parliament? Yes. Can you describe the nature of the conversation that you had with Mr. Singh, with Ms. Lowe? Mr. Nathan's evidence is this. From what I recall, we of course expressed disappointment that Mr. Khan, Ms. Khan had lied and shock. But I think from what I recall, Ms. Lowe and Mr. Singh were talking about how, or rather Ms. Lowe was telling Mr. Singh, that sexual assault victims do experience trauma, and that can sometimes make them, in some circumstances, be less likely to want to tell the truth, out of fear perhaps. I remember Ms. Lowe saying that this was a point that she wanted to communicate to Mr. Singh, just from her own. Ms. Lowe happens to be someone who has good knowledge about issues of women's rights and sexual assault cases in Singapore. And so, just to summarise my understanding of that meeting, as it relates to the lie, was that we were all on the same page in terms of knowing that she had lied in Parliament and in terms of knowing that she had cited the sexual assault as her reason for that. Mm -hmm. You recall this exchange? Uh, I don't recall it to the detail that Mr. Nathan recalls it. Uh, I, it, it. Now I remember what the completely unrelated party matter was. Uh, but essentially, uh, the thing I remember of this meeting was confirming with them that Ms. Khan had lied in Parliament. So that was something that was discussed in... An, uh, I wouldn't say discussed. The gist of which would yeah. be accurately contained in Mr. Nathan's evidence. Correct? I would not go so far as to say that because I think um, uh, this recollection of uh, Ms. Lowe may well have taken place on the 12th of October in my house Ms. rather than at this meeting. No. Uh, Ms. Lowe being uh, that sexual assault victims experience trauma and so forth. All right. So you think that, say for that part, which was discussed later on the 12th of October, the I rest believe of it so, is because, uh, because the, that meeting... So don't that, speak over me, otherwise... Sorry, sorry. I, I beg your pardon. So please, please say for that portion about what Ms. Lowe says, the rest of Mr. Nathan's evidence is accurate about what was discussed on the 10th of August? Let me just look at that evidence again. I do not recall them being expressing disappointment... That Miss Khan had lied and, sh and that Miss Khan had lied, and shock. I don't recall that. That would be quite a. I don't recall usual. That. I mean, that's quite an expected response, isn't it? Uh, the, from uh, paying and I mean, you've asked me the question. I don't recall shock and disappointment from them that Miss Khan had lied. I, I don't recall that. 
they must certainly be at least concerned. I think it was more a question of whether I had known by that point already. And I said, I know, because she told me. But in terms of these additional points um, made thereafter, uh, Miss Lowe telling Mr. Singh sexual assault victims do experience trauma and so forth. I, I don't recall this because... Okay, all right. Certainly, I, I don't recall this being made on the on the 10th of uh, Okay, let August. me go on. Yes. And I let me read on. Bottom sure. of page 32. Sure. A few questions. Did Mr. Singh tell you or Ms. Lo that Ms. Khan had to come to Parliament at the next sitting to clarify the lie? Answer, no. Did Mr. Singh say to you that it was important for Ms. Khan to quickly inform her family of the sexual assault incident so that she could then proceed to clear up the lie in Parliament? Answer, no. Did Mr. Singh discuss with either yourself or Ms. Lo any steps to be taken in relation to the clarification of the lie, perhaps outside of Parliament, on social media, on other platforms that you might have had? Answer, no. Would that be an accurate no, discussion? No, indeed. I, I don't think it was discussed in any significant way. None of way. this was discussed. None of this was okay. discussed, yes. few lines down. So if I understand your evidence correctly, between 8 August and 2nd October, as far as you know, there were no discussions between Ms. Khan and the senior leadership of the Workers' Party, comprising Mr. Singh, Mr. Manap and Ms. Lim. As far as I know, no. That you would agree with. But that correct? was my evidence earlier already. Okay, in fact, your very resolute evidence. Just I mean, it's the truth. Now, Mr. Mr. Singh, uh, why did you not explain to Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lowe that the intention was for Ms. Khan to come forward at some stage to clarify the lie. There was no reason for me to do that. I had to, this was an issue between me and Ms. and a sitting MP, Ms. Khan. And they are coming to you. Obviously, you know by then that she had also told them about the lie. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you know that they will be helping her or will help her. Mm -hmm. So, and eventually, I think you do call upon them to assist you to deal with events post 12th of October, mm -hmm. that meeting. That's right. Which you agree with, right? That's right. So, why would you not have at least shared your plan with them? If that you was see, indeed at the that plan. Point, at that point, there was the only plan, if you, you use that word plan, was for her to go and speak to her parents about it. She's a MP of the party. She has to take ownership and responsibility of the matter. It was something for her to do and for me to hear from her. What's the resolution? So I did not think at any point then it was relevant for me to raise this matter with paying or Yudish. Because but this is something for Miss Khan to take yes, ownership but over. You know that Miss Lo you might disagree with it being said on this occasion about her knowledge about sexual assault victims and how to assist and perhaps counsel them. You might not agree with it being spoken on this occasion, mm -hmm. but you do know Ms. Lo quite well, and you do know that she has an interest in this area. And if your concern was her state of mind, whether she's told her family, and those were the questions that you had to ask yourself and satisfy yourself of before she could take the next step, which was an important step to remove from the record on Parliament the lie, then... It would have been quite usual, expected even, to have discussed this with Miss Lowe. Um, to find out how she was, where she's going, has she told her family, and then prepare for the next steps. So, number one, I don't know that Miss Lowe is this specialist in uh, women's rights and sexual assault cases. What I do know is Miss Khan has a therapist, which she admitted to me on the 8th of August, who is aware of this episode. And... I would think that would be a more appropriate person for her to seek counsel from. Okay. But, I know you'll say you've said this before, but at no stage <laughs> did you make a, any attempt to find out whether the therapist sessions were going well, whether she was ready, whether she had told her family well, at I've, all. I've given you my right. evidence, yes. Uh, you see, I, I'm, I'm producing all of these other... No, I understand material. you, are, but, but I've already given the evidence that you're trying to, to, to try to, no, to, to try to understand the entire, the entirety of the circumstances. Mr. Tong, you, I've told you, you the see, truth. I, I, so, uh, I've been very upfront with you, Mr. Singh. Yes. I, I've I, been very upfront with you too. I look at this and you know, it, it, I find it surprising mm -hmm. that for someone with your experience, 
And I would say I've seen you with your force of conviction when you speak, when you make demands, when you set out your views clearly. It seems somewhat out of character for you not to have made it clear to Miss Khan either on the 8th of August or on the 3rd of October that she should tell the truth. Make, make it clear. I, I made it? Or, oh, sorry, go ahead. Or, well, in those words, okay? I, I know what you're going to say, but in those words. Or, even if you felt you had made it clear not to have taken steps to check with either her family or the progress of her therapy sessions or indeed with Miss Khan on several occasions when you met with her, or with any of her close associates as to how she's doing and whether she's ready to now take the next step, which I think we agreed would be important, to clarify the truth that remains on the record. Um, Mr. Tong, I so, given, so sorry, with, with that in mind, can you offer us a reason? Mr. Tong, I, it, it is, we're coming back to the evidence I've already given. I told her to speak to her parents, we will have to deal with this issue. And I told her that on the 8th of August. I also have given it in evidence a few times now that from there up to the 3rd of October, and in a different way on the 1st of October, I had communicated my view on what was the right thing to do. Now, I can't embellish or even attempt to want to do embellish any further evidence I've already given because that was the case. And I came to that judgment because... Here I'm dealing with someone who is telling me that she has, she is suffering from a trauma of in the past. And I, in my view, thank you for, for those uh, comments about my character, but in my assessment, this was somebody who needed time to deal with this problem. That was my, yes. that was my view. Uh, I think to I understand your explanation that time is needed, but what I don't understand about your explanation is why you don't take any attempt to find out whether the time has been taken I to expect, do so. Yeah. I, I, I expect that she would be speaking to her parents, speaking to a therapist, and when she's ready and when she's decided, okay, look, Pritam, I can make this clarification now. So I expected this, it to come from her as a, I know, as but a very in senior... Your mind, what, as, when? When? As a, sorry. Two weeks? Two months? It's the same question you asked me earlier. And, but I have to understand that. No, it would have... if. Let's say in October, let, we talk about, since it's a hypothetical question, in October, let's say the issue didn't come up. No, Would I'm I have not asking it. I'm by the same person that you speak no, no, of, Mr. Singh, sorry, whose sorry. character, I, his convictions, etc. I'm, I'm no, not asking finish. you to Let me finish at least. No, no, I, I think maybe you heard me wrong. I'm not asking you to construct a hypothetical scenario. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you, in your position, mm -hmm. when you decide on a framework for something to happen, mm -hmm speak to family first, yes, yes. then come clean and clarify the lie. Yes. When you decide on that, you must have some expectation as to when it's going to take place. So, so it's not a hypothetical question because when you put this out and you mm. formulate this plan, mm -hmm. in your mind, there must be, there must a, be a sense resolution. as to what would be reasonable for this plan to be carried out. When you say plan, what plan are you talking and about? Meaning for the family to be told and then to come clean in Parliament. And this is something that I would expect to hear from Ms. Khan. No, she has I'm asking for you. Yes, you. I, that's, my, that's your, my answer. Your expectation as to the time frame for this. Right. So, my expectation is by the 3rd of October, it's, in fact, even earlier, it's this, she obviously is not coming up. I'm, I send this note to all the MPs. On the 3rd of October, I make it clear that she has to take ownership. And that's actually a very important meeting because if I follow this direction, this line of questioning, if there was no plan that you are at carte blanche to decide on your own timeline, I wouldn't have met her on the 3rd of October to tell her, look, you've got to take ownership and responsibility. Now, but in the event... According to you, yes, the 3rd of October, ownership would only happen if it's raised. Well, indeed. I mean, if the matter had right. come... Because she hadn't come up to me to say, I'm ready to come up with all this. I've spoken to my parents. I've done my, my yeah, sessions so with my therapist. Your answer is circuitous. I mean, on the one well, hand, there's nothing you say circuitous about it. It's actually very quite straightforward. Very it's circuitous. Very straightforward. Because on the one hand, you are saying, I have a timeline. 3rd October is very important. You said so in, no, your, no. in, in yes. your evidence. Yes. But on the other hand, when I confront you with the proposition that actually 3rd, August, uh, 3rd October 
It may not come up the next day. Indeed, it may not. Yes. And but so I've then already you say, put... Then I, you say, well, yeah. then it's up to her. No, I didn't say it's up to her. I, look, on the 3rd of on October, I have put her on notice of what is... what she would need to do if it comes up. Take ownership, take responsibility. Now, if it doesn't come up, I've already told her that. I will have to square away with her again. You have to take ownership and responsibility. Yeah. And after that, it's now hypothetical when that would happen, but all this is not really relevant, I suppose, for the purposes of our exchange. Well, actually, it is relevant. I mean, Go ahead. The fact of the matter is that you must have in your mind a time frame, and as I said, it, you would be acting in a manner consistent with that. You would check whether the criteria that you mm -hmm. have set for yourself for clarification in Parliament to take place has been met. Has she told the family? Yes. And I find out from you that not only do you not ask the family, you don't ask her. That's right. You don't ask her therapist or you don't ask about her therapist. That's the truth. You don't ask her associates. You don't ask anyone. Right. You don't even ask, as far as I understand from Mr. Faisal's evidence, you don't even ask your fellow Workers' Party CEC members. That's right. I, Nothing. This is my responsibility. I know yes. I'm the leader of the party. So, I have made a judgment as to what I think is this lady's condition. And I believe that this is something that she will have to take ownership of she will have to take responsibility for, she'll have to close the issue with her parents, and when she's ready, we can deal with it. But, you take but no, it's not a case... But you take no steps to find out when she's ready. No, that's true, because I've really given evidence to that regard. Right. Now, let me move on, Mr. Mr. Singh. On the 1st of November, yes, Ms. Han made her personal explanation in Parliament, right? On the 1st of November, yes, yes. that's right. And uh, we agreed earlier that this was something that was had been run through the CEC. That's right. You had also given input to it, right? I had taken a look at it, but my inputs weren't, very, weren't heavy at all, actually. It was in the main from Ms. Khan. you have with you. If you could just tell me the title, please. I will when I find it, yes. The, uh, the thickest one from Miss Lowe. I'm not sure how it's titled on your page. Is it this one? This one, is it? Uh, which page am I looking at? Can you turn, please, to page 142? Yes. Here there's a discussion about the draft personal explanation. Mm -hmm. Starting from the top, are you okay to meet after? Yudish says, I'm okay, should be okay. Three people can meet at your place or HQ. And then at 12.19 p.m., Ms. Khan says, Pritam had some comments and I made some slight edits as well. Paying says, do you change from Saturday? But Ray, if Pritam has signed off on it, is it necessary that we meet? I wanted to get any last input. And then at 12, at 2.46 p.m., she says, if P has signed off on it, I think it's okay. We don't need to go over it and edit it one more time. Ray says, it's okay. 2.47 p.m., she says, it's just that he took a big chunk out and asked me to mull over it. Mm -hmm. Do you recall this? I don't recall it, but uh, there may you? well, but I, it was not subst anything which I commented was not substantive to... But it says you took a big chunk out of That's what she says. Yeah. Did you, do you recall it? Is I it don't correct? recall taking any, a substantive chunk, but I would have to, you would have to bring my attention to what that chunk she's referring to well, that I perhaps can share I was share going to ask you. you to help us. Would Sorry? you be able... I was going to ask you to help us. Would you be able to give to this committee 
the drafts of the statement? I don't have those drafts. Those drafts were with... I, I mean, I can check. I can check whatever I have. I will submit everything I have to the committee, but I'll have to check. Okay. But what, what we would like to have would be yes. the draft of the statement and the right. various iterations, which would show how they were revised uh, and by who. Okay. Uh, I may have difficulty doing that because a lot of the drafts were returned to RISA. So I may not have copies of the drafts. But if I do have any, I will give them to the committee. Okay. All right. Yes. Can you please pick up the um, bundle? Not the same one. Mm -hmm. It is now uh, submission by Ms. Khan dated 7th December. We, we looked at it briefly just now. At the start months. of this. 7th December. Okay, go ahead. You recall we were on the first page earlier on 27th September. That's right. right? Yes. That's so right. if you now go over the page to page 2, mm -hmm. just quickly cast your eye over the messages. I think you should be familiar because these are your messages. Right. So, 16th of Sorry, October. these are my messages to who? Raisha. Okay. 16th of October, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. Morning, Pritam, I've dropped it off. This would be the draft personal explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me pause for a moment. Yeah. You had a meeting on the 12th of October with Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lowe to discuss taking steps to prepare this explanation. That's right. And by the morning of the 16th of October... Mm -hmm. Ms. Khan had dropped off the statement to you. She had drafted a statement, yes. Okay. It would appear that she really has no difficulty with preparing the statement and coming forward. She was quite proactive. Would I wouldn't jump to that conclusion. Well, she was... She was instructed on the 12th of October that there was no way you could expect this issue to lie low. Yes, you but early on you gave statement. us the impression that she was still prevaricating. She was prevaricating on the 12th of October when she met us for the... When she met us, me okay. and Sylvia... She was prevaricating because she did not want to tell the truth. And she did not want to make a statement in Parliament. By the 12th, the consensus was that she would she make a statement to. to come clean, right? Absolutely. Okay. And thereafter, she cooperated with you, correct? That's right. right. She agreed. So she drops off one draft on the 16th of October. Mm -hmm. Then right after, you say, how soon can a second draft be submitted? That's 18th of October. Mm-hmm. So that's the second one at least, we can tell. Yes. Then if you go further down the page, at 10.36 a.m. on the 20th of October, you say, Hi, Raisha, please make time to come over. Today, to my place, 8.30 p.m. I'll confirm again once Sylvia replies. Yes. Make that 7 p.m. So the 20th of October was, it seems, another meeting. Yes. Then on the 22nd of October, Raisha says at 12.15 p.m., Hi, Pritam, I spoke my dad. Can we meet maybe... This weekend on Monday, your answer, let's meet tomorrow with Sylvia, 11 a.m. Party HQ. That will be on the 23rd mm -hmm. of October. That's right. And further down the page, 27th of October, Hi, Raisha, can you come to Parliament at 12 p.m. today urgently? Yes. Hi, Pritam, yes, I will be there. Sorry, let me just uh, bring myself, my attention down. Uh, you said 27th of October? Yes. Ah, yes, I see it. Correct. Okay, come to my office, right? right? Okay. So... This exchange mm -hmm. shows us that there are at least four occasions when you met yes. and looked at the drafts. Um, and there are probably more. I would think that this was... I, I'm not sure about the exact number. I can come back with an answer for the committee, but on the basis of these exchanges, I think that's a reasonable conclusion. All right. Now, on the same day as Ms. Khan making the personal explanation... Mm -hmm. You release a press statement. Remember, we saw that. Uh, I didn't release a press statement. I just well, you put up, I, I put up a Facebook post, which then the party carried on its pages. Okay, so let's look, look at that. I think you had yes. it earlier with you, right? Yes. Do you yes. still have it? Uh, just bear with me. I'm sure it's around here. Ah, there we are. Okay. Look at the opening line of this. Mm -hmm. MP Raisha Khan should not have shared an account that contained untruth in the house. Mm -hmm. Right? And its middle portion cites the Parliament Act, several other pieces of information, and uh, it's a short paragraph. Yes. Now, let me put some 
questions to you. You knew about this falsehood from as early as 7th August, right? Yes. So why does this not appear anywhere in the statement? I didn't see, I didn't see the relevance of that to this statement. You see, Miss... Miss Khan, Ms. it was for Miss Khan to tell the truth to Parliament. Of course. She didn't tell the truth. But you see, Mr. Singh, part of a holistic assessment of Ms. Khan must include whether or not she had told the truth earlier to her superiors, i.e., in this case, yourself, Ms. Lim, and Mr. Faisal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That would be relevant, correct? It would not... Uh, in the context of why she lied uh, because of this uh, traumatic episode, I think it colours uh, what ought to have been done quite significantly. Meaning that she had told her superiors earlier would colour what ought to have been done quite significantly. Mm -hmm. Is that your evidence? Yes. So it's important for the public to understand that, in fact, that's what she did, isn't it? It is important to understand, but, and she admits to that, to that in her statement on the 1st yes. of November. Yes, and it's important for the public to understand that, she, in fact, she came to you, mm -hmm. and then also subsequently to Ms Lim and to Mr Faisal, the three most senior people in the CEC of the Workers' Party. Yes. To explain her position. Yes. Correct? And at least according to you, settle on a plan, settle on an approach to deal with the clarification subsequently, right? I wouldn't use the word settle, but she was told to go and speak to her no, parents. No. So there was a yeah. plan, speak to the parents that's first. Your, those then, are your words, those are not my words. So yeah. let's take it step by step. Yes. There was, you told us that uh -huh. she was told to settle with the parents, tell them so right. that they know, and then... That clears the deck for her to come to Parliament to clarify, right? That's right. So that understanding was reached with her, according to you. No, 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 no. Where did I, where did I say that understanding was reached? Where in my evidence how, do I say that? How else is she going to come to Parliament? She would have to first tell her parents, she would have her to family. First, yes, go ahead. And then she will come and clarify. Right. She will first have to tell her parents. She knows that the issue has to be resolved. She has to tell me that the issue will be resolved and this is what I will do. And then she will come to Parliament and make that statement. All right. Is it relevant for the public to know that that was what happened and the 1st November yeah. clarification right. is the product of that plan? If the situation was that we had indeed told her to cover up, take this lie to the grave, I think it would be highly relevant. Okay. But it wasn't. Remember this later yes. on. Remember this. Yes, I will remember okay. it. If you had told her to do this, it would be highly relevant. If, I, if you had told her to lie, yes, remember to, this. To, to take this lie okay. to the grave. So coming back to this point, mm -hmm. please explain to me why you think it is not appropriate in the interest of open, transparency, honesty. Right. These are words which I think you speak more of than most people in Parliament. <laughs> why would you not include this fact in your statement, whether to the media or... I did not, I did not see media. it as relevant. I suggest to you, Mr. Singh, you don't see it as relevant because you know that disclosing that you knew about this falsehood from as early as the 7th of August, three months prior to the personal explanation, would cast you in a bad light. No, not, I'm, not, I'm not so worried about my reputation in that regard, Mr. I, Tong. M Mr. Singh... Uh, I have answered your question. I hope I have. And I, and, I, and I believe that that's why you omitted it from this statement. No, that was not a consideration at all. It didn't even cross my mind. And that's why this statement presents a picture that suggests that it was Ms. Khan alone who told the falsehood, didn't share this with anyone else, and is only now coming to Parliament to make this personal explanation. Those are the material facts. But it's also material when you want to assess A, Ms Khan, and B, as a broader whole, the Workers' Party, the fact that you and Ms Lim and Mr Faisal were aware earlier would also be material. No, I would not say it was material because, as I have mentioned earlier in my evidence, this was something that she had to take ownership of, and this was Ms. more relevant. She told a lie. 
she had to explain why she told the lie. And she also had to explain why on the fourth, she told the lie again. Those, I think, were the more critical factors as far as I was concerned. Yes. Miss, Mr. Singh, this statement sounds like Miss Khan kept it from all of you. None of you knew. That would be one reasonable... How do you come to that conclusion? Well, because it doesn't say that you knew. No, but how do you specifically come to that conclusion? What sentence here gives you that impression a that we are hiding something? It's a complete absence of the sentence. And that's the point. That's why that's you're hiding That's the inference something. you're making. There's no, nothing for me to hide. I've given this on, on nothing, evidence now. That's, that's there was absolutely nothing for me to hide. I think and this is where I come back to the point I made earlier, and you reminded me of it. If we had told her to lie, then it becomes material. But we never made, we never ex told her to take a lie, take it to the grave. Nothing of that you sort. You see, it's it's important for both Parliament and the public to know mm -hmm. that Miss Khan had come to the senior leadership of the Workers' Party, mm -hmm. confessed to them fully, and worked out with them when she would, what would be the conditions for which she would then come to Parliament to clarify the lie. That may well be your right. view, but I don't agree with it. What's wrong with being open and transparent, honest? Give all the information. Sure, I agree with you. What's, What's wrong? wrong with that? Nothing is wrong with that. Why, so why don't, don't you do, do the same? Why don't you do the same when Trace Together happened in late October? Huh? Why didn't the government just come out and tell the truth straight away? Don't wait for a parliamentary question. Yes, I thought you might say that. Yeah, but you, it's because it's very relevant. Inquiry, I'm not questioning this, this, it, this inquiry, but this is a decision this, this that you've inquiry. made. This is a decision the government made, and a I'm, call the government made, and this is the call I made. And I'm suggesting to you that this call that you made was to suppress the information, suppress the fact that you knew, because you knew that it would cast you in a bad light. I come am on, not, Mr. Singh. I completely disagree. Cast your mind to 2nd December when you had the press conference. Mm -hmm. We saw the notes. Just... Have a quick look. Tell us, what were the most searching questions that the press asked of you? I when mean, did you know? Yes. Why did you do what you did? Right. What did you do? Right. Those questions knew? were even put out there already before the press put them to me. That's why I addressed them on the and, front foot. And let me suggest to you that it was because the public was asking questions about what you knew, what you did, when you knew, mm -hmm. that you had no choice but to call this press conference. No, no, there was a choice whether we wanted to call the press conference or not. And but I believe that those questions were relevant because they were going around and I wanted to answer them. And they were going around because your 1st November statement was less than open, Mr. No, there Singh. Was, there was no connection with the 1st November statement. The, connection, the connection was the resignation of Raisa Khan. Mr. Singh is absolutely connected. They all pertain to the same issues. Uh, Mr. Tong, it's a nice attempt for you to question what we put in our press statements. You can take that view, but I'm telling you it's an incorrect view. There was nothing I, to hide. And this idea of uh, protecting myself, my reputation, sorry, I, this is not what I enter politics for. You may say that, Mr. Singh. But I have, I think ju you I have just not have. given us one credible reason why. Not to you. This material fact of your knowledge, mm -hmm. your knowledge right. of the falsehood three months before it was disclosed in Parliament. Right. Why is that not in the statement? Well, and the only logical inference is that you wanted to distance yourself from the knowledge of Ms. Khan. Uh, r rather, this is herself from the lie that Ms. Khan had told and the fact that you knew about it right. and chose to do nothing about it. And I had good reasons why I chose to do nothing about it. Please don't interrupt you. me. Sorry, go ahead. And chose to do nothing about it, which I will remind you, I've asked you ad nauseum and you've said ad nauseum that in fact you've chosen to do nothing about it. All this while. So the reality, Mr. Singh, is that you chose to take this out because you knew that that would put you in a bit of a pickle. Mr. Mr. Tong, completely incorrect. A completely incorrect and, but I must say, quite imaginative conclusion. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. But I'm not imagining it. No, I believe you are. And then on the 2nd of November, mm -hmm. you, you see that maybe in the same bundle, the Workers' Party media statement is made, this time round announcing the formation of a disciplinary panel. Yes. Now, let me ask you to have a quick look at it. Mm -hmm. The panel was approved, uh, the CEC approved the formation of the panel, the DP, to look into the admissions made by MP Raisa Khan 
in Parliament on 1st November, arising from an earlier speech made by the MP in Parliament on 3rd August 2021. Mm -hmm. And the members of the DP are set out in that media statement. Yes. Now, in this context, would it not be relevant, a relevant consideration for the DP that you and Ms. Slim and Mr. Faisal Manap had been aware of the falsehood from August and had been working with Ms. Khan towards having this clarified in Parliament. Agree? Uh, could you repeat the question, sorry? Yes. I said, in this context, would it not be relevant, a relevant consideration mm -hmm. for the DP that you and Ms. Lim and Mr. Faisal Manap had been aware of the falsehood from August and had been working with Ms. Khan towards having this clarified in Parliament? It would have been relevant if our intention was as Ms. Khan interpreted, to take a lie to the grave. It would be very relevant. But we had no such takeaway to her in that manner. There was absolutely no way she could have interpreted it in that way. And we, did, we looked at it as an issue that the party had to resolve. A party, M party MP has made this, uh, has, has told a lie in Parliament. She's finally come clean in Parliament on the 1st of November, told the truth. She confirms, as she did with us on the 8th of August, as to what exactly happened. And we didn't see it as something untoward or out of the ordinary for us to consider ourselves um, it, it, an information that had to be released. Because we know why, we know exactly why it was difficult for us to share this beyond the three of us, because of the personal and private nature of what she had shared with us. So you see, Mr. Mr. Singh, mm -hmm. this panel is set up to look into the falsehoods and mm -hmm. presumably to make recommendations as to what to do with Ms. Khan, right? From a party perspective, yes. Yes, from a party perspective. Yes. Wouldn't it be relevant that the senior leadership of the Workers' Party had been aware of the falsehood much earlier and had played a part in advising her on the steps to take to correct it? Uh, it doesn't change the fact that she was no, the one who took the answer my question. Line. Uh, no, I don't think so. It must... It must be material because you are also determining her fate, what to do with her, what sanctions to impose on her. Correct. We are not determining her fate. You are making recommendations. CC determines her fate. Yes. We are not judge, jury, and but execution. Three of, of the you DP. are. Look, you know, three of you are the most senior members of the CEC. Uh huh. I uh, know we're not. There are other senior members on the CEC as well. And and I think the reality is that the CEC included the three members on the DP, right? The CEC is not a bunch of yes, yes no? men and women. Uh, yes or no? But I say, ask, uh, ask that question again. The, the three C members of the DP are from the CEC. We are part of the CEC, yes. yes, of course. So the fact of the matter is that your conduct mm -hmm. in advising her, well, first being aware of the lie and then advising her on the steps to take, would be relevant considerations, wouldn't advising it? Advising her on the steps to take. Yes, to tell her family and then come clean in Parliament. Yes. Wouldn't you? Well, that's all I told her. That's all we. That's all I told her on Those the eighth of August, right? Those are relevant considerations. And to me, and the, the point is, at any point from August right up to the third of October, she is at liberty to come up and come and see me and says, "Look, I've squared this issue away. I am going to deal with it in Parliament." Let and me ask. Let me ask you this question. Let me approach it in a different way, since uh, you either are not understanding me or I understand you perfectly. Don't want well. to understand. Maybe, then maybe you don't want to answer the question. No, I've answered the question also. Why are the three of you, mm -hmm. and only the three of you, mm -hmm. looking into this, judging her, when it is the three of you who were aware of the falsehood three months ago mm -hmm. and had been advising her and speaking to her about coming clean? You haven't reframed the question. It's still the same question. The, the well, answer is the same. We never saw it as something which was untoward. MP Raisa has told a lie in Parliament. From a party perspective, we have to deal with it. We know some facts about it, but those, though the facts that we know do not include a narrative that we told her to tell a lie or to take it to the grave. It's not about whether you... So for us, and I'm answering the question, so for us, it didn't matter. It never even crossed our minds that the composition of the discipline panel would be a problem. Mr Singh, I, you know, 
I'm surprised to hear that. I'm surprised you're surprised because I've given you the answer. Because the you... only three people in all of the Workers' Party mm -hmm. members of parliament yes. who knew about the lie earlier yes. were you, yes. Ms Lim yes. and Mr Faisal. We established that a long time ago. And these are the only three people on the DP. Right. So, even if you think, even if you think that you have done nothing wrong, mm -hmm. you advised her, you didn't tell her to lie, I would suggest to you that that fact that you were aware much earlier, MP Raizakat had, had come to you to confess it and had taken your counsel on it and acted in a manner based on your advice, those would be material facts for the public to know, for Parliament to know, and indeed for the members of the Workers' Party to know. I disagree. Because amongst the submissions that you invited were submissions from the Workers' Party members, correct? Yes. And the members of the Workers' Party who came forward, mm -hmm. gave views to you on the DP, would include views as to whether they felt she should be retained as an MP or expelled as an MP, correct? Yes. And surely the entire range of her conduct, her behaviour, whether she held on to the lie for three months or whether she confessed it to the senior leadership of the Workers' Party early, all of that must be relevant, what surely. Would, what would be relevant is if Answer we Answer my had, question. Uh, no, because it never crossed our mind in that way. And what that's would, because you were blind to it. You, you, you were disagree. deliberately blind to it, Mr Singh, because... Because there, there, was, is, let there me were no lies let, involved. Let me finish. It's not about lie only, Mr Singh. It's about honesty and disclosure, openness... Concepts Mr. that you speak about all the time. Mr. Tong, I Mi see where... You are, inviting, you are inviting members of the Workers' Party mm -hmm. to come yes. and give you a submission, give you a view on right. whether you should retain Ms. Right. Khan or expel her from the party. Right. Surely it is relevant for them yes. to know yes. that Ms. Khan had in fact come to you, the SG of Workers' Party, right. the chairman and the vice chairman, right. told the lie, told, made a clean breast of things, told all of you that it was a lie and worked with you and get advice from you. And as early as the Work 7th of August... Worked with you, get advice from you? Surely uh, that's I relevant. would disagree with that characterization. But my view is... is Whatever quite... you might disagree on, Mr Singh, the fact of the matter is that you didn't disclose the fact that she came up to you to disclose. Uh, she didn't come up to us. We, disclosed we basically got it out of her. That's still and, relevant. And to me, that, 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 that's very relevant to me now that I, I'm speaking of it, but what's more relevant is the DP didn't operate to hide things from the Workers' Party members. The DP did not tell a lie. No, The no. fact is, Ms Khan had to correct a lie in Parliament. She told a lie in Parliament. Yes. She finally came out with the truth. And then we dealt with that issue from that perspective. Yes. And the DP is also making recommendations as to whether you should expel Ms Khan, correct? The DP is making recommendations as to what ought to be done from a party perspective. Yes. And then it is and up to the CEC to decide what and, to do with her. And that includes whether to retain her or expel her from the party, that's right? The, that's the decision of the so CEC. So the gravamen of her conduct is relevant, correct? The gravamen of her conduct is relevant. That's, yes. what's, uh, that's what the DP and, is looking at. And you would agree with me, I mean, you're a lawyer by training and a very experienced politician. You would agree with me, Mr Singh, that there is a world of difference between someone like Ms Khan who thought up the lie, spoke the lie in Parliament, kept it to herself, refused to clarify when called upon on the 4th of October to do so, mm -hmm. did not share this with anyone else, and then only decide, decided to confess and come clean three months later. That's one scenario. The other scenario is a, an MP like Ms Khan, who told a lie in Parliament, five days later told the entire senior leadership comprising the chairman, the vice chairman, and the sec gen of the party that she has told a lie. And then the sec gen tells her, this is what we do. Tell your family, and then we sort this out. Mm -hmm. And according to the sec gen, this is what she does. Mm -hmm. She carries that plan out to a T. She does Clears not. her draft. Clears her draft with you several times. Explains her position to the CEC. And then goes and makes a personal statement in parliament on the 1st of November. Yes. Don't you agree there's a world of difference? Well, now the two examples are, they were so long. But in my view, the critical difference between no, both these answer examples... Answer my question. Don't I disagree. Agree? I disagree. 
The critical difference between the two examples is the conduct of the leadership. Are the leadership telling her to take a lie to the grave? No. We are not telling her to take a lie to the grave. I'm, no. I'm giving my evidence. No. And because we are not telling her to do that, there's no motive. Actually, we never even considered it to be a, a relevant issue, to be frank. Not even relevant because we know what has, what has happened. Ms. Khan has not taken responsibility and ownership, and we dealt with it from that perspective. Mr. Singh, you seem to try to impress upon us that, at least upon me, that it is only relevant if somehow the DP members incited her to tell a lie Absolutely. or did something wrong. I agree. But I'm suggesting to you that actually that's not just the only scenario where a full disclosure is relevant. A full disclosure is relevant because the DP is inviting members of the Workers' Party to come and make an assessment of her conduct and make a submission to the DP as to whether to expel Ms Khan or to retain her as an MP. And in that context, in that context, the fact that Ms Khan has come to the senior leadership of the Workers' Party and confessed three months prior and has worked with the CEC, worked with the senior membership in leadership, including yourself, on her personal statement, which you all approved, surely that's relevant. No, it's for, not relevant. I'll tell you why. For a member, for a judging member of the public or a judging member of the Workers' Party to decide whether or not this is a person who should be retained as an MP or be expelled from the party. That's if you assume that the DP's role was to decide on expulsion or retention. But it the DP didn't start the DP at the, didn't start with a conclusion in mind. We didn't prejudge the issue. Not at all. And you see, you were told what I'm putting to you, you're not hearing for the first time. You were told this by Miss Lowe and Mr. Nathan. Told what? Let me show you. First of all, please pick up this bundle again. I know where you're going with this. I thought you would. I know you where, I, where you're going with this. Yes. Come, have a look. Okay. This is the screenshots. Is it this one? Hmm? Yes. Go to the last page of that bundle, please. Yes. Okay, the second last message there is a message of the 10th of November, 9.56 a.m. Uh, just give me a second. Let's just confirm sure. whether we're on the same... Uh, uh, this is a message from who? It is... I, I'm i told by Ms. Lowe that this was a message that was sent out... On the 10th of November. On the 10th of November. Yes, that is correct. By the Workers' Party, and I'm not sure who is responsible for sending that out, but it was sent out to all members, inviting them to provide their views to the DP. I don't have that uh, communication here. Second last uh, I message. may be on the wrong bundle. I may be on the wrong bundle. Okay, I'll get some of the Is help. this the one? I don't think so. I think that might be the one. Look at the second last message, Mr. Singh. Uh, second last message, we Pritam just told... No, no, no on I the last page. Go to the last page. There's nothing on the last page. Can I see? Circle it for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but, but there was no last page. Yes. Okay. Now we are on the same page. Literally. That's right. Okay. 10th November, Workers' mm -hmm. Party sends out an invite to all members to provide their views to the DP. That's right. It says at 9.56 a.m., Dear members, the DP is looking into MP Raisha Khan's admissions and invites members' views. That is correct. If you wish to meet the panel, please email Nathaniel Ko and so on so that yes. arrangements can be made. Right. right? So it's right. a general invitation to all That's members right. uh, it, it to is. come forward. Yes. You are inviting members to come forward to offer their view mm -hmm. as to how they see the episode and yes. what they would say yes. should be done to Ms. Khan, right? Yes. Okay. Now, eventually, the DP would take into account those members' views when deciding on the appropriate sanction to recommend to the CEC for yes. Ms. Khan, right? Yes. Now, on the... Do you recall being told by Ms. Lowe after she got this message, that the DP has to be transparent. Yes, she mentioned that on the 10th of uh, December, but I, uh, 10th of November. Yes, on the very day that this... Right. Yes. I'd like you to have a look at that 
series yes. of messages, please. Yes. Yeah. So, so you know exactly what we are talking about. Please pick up this bundle again, the thick one. Yes. Uh, what page are we on? Yes, we are on uh, page 222. Yes. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. It should be 223. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. So, at this is an exchange of emails, um, uh, WhatsApps between yourself and mm -hmm. Paying. So, at, on the 10th of November, she says, Hi, Pritam. I've tried to reserve my comments on the disciplinary panel so far, but I just saw the message that was sent out to everyone. This is the message that was sent out at 10 9.56 a.m. That's right. Right. No. The earlier message was 9.56, and her response an hour later is to you directly. And let me just show you what she says to you. I feel that it's plain as day to me and people involved in her apology that this is a little backwards peddling. Clearly, the party didn't anticipate the backlash despite warnings, and it's trying to do something to quell people's anger. While I disagree with it, I can empathise with it. I don't think it is at all fair to let party members think that they have a say in this process. If this is done as a mock consultation exercise, then party members will be unhappy their opinions weren't really considered. If it is not a mock exercise, then they will likely all ask Raisha to resign when they do not have the full facts. I welcome the DP to be transparent and share their involvement in their findings barring personal information. Sorry, share their involvement in this, comma, their findings barring personal information so that the party can actually make an accurate decision. Yes. That's your response, you. Sorry, your on. response, I hear you, PY, but I do think we need to give party members a platform to have their say on this important matter rather than commiserate privately or between each other and believe that a party leadership decides things without considering their views. She says, I get that, but the DP hasn't exactly told the party of its knowledge and involvement. Yes. You then reply, despite that, it will be good to hear people out. Yes. Paying then says, but their opinions are not accurate because they don't have the facts. Everyone is of the view that we can cut her loose and distance the party from her mistake. But if she's out of the party, she's still subjected to the COP and there's not much we can do to what she says and shares when it gets there. And then your response, they have the same facts as the public does. I'm not so sure everyone feels that she should be cut loose. Let me pause for a moment. You remember this yes, exchange? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Paying used to be your SA or LA, correct? For several years. She was my SA, I believe. In fact, you spoke about her in your inaugural election rally in 2011, correct? Yes, I must have. In glowing terms, right? Well, it was 10 years ago. Would you like me to remind you of it? <laughs> I like, think I know what it was. Yeah. I think I know what I said. Your inaugural speech in yes. glowing terms. Right. You looked. I didn't know who she was at that point ex in time. Exactly, but yeah. you made it a point to... Look for her. Because it was an interesting And eventually, view. she became your essay. Yes. You thought well of her. Yes. I made that earlier on. I made that point earlier in my, Thank you. In my evidence. She speaks her mind, right? She speaks her mind, yes. She's a cadre member of the Workers' Party. Yes. And one who is... One of two who is closely associated with and helping Ms. Khan in her work. Yes, that is correct. She's coming to you. Mm -hmm. One hour after we re she receives this broadcast mm -hmm. to tell you a few things. One, please be transparent. Mm -hmm. Give the full facts. Mm -hmm. Share your involvement, meaning yours, Ms. Lim's and Mr. Faisal's involvement. Yes. Why, why didn't you do that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, as far as I was concerned, the DP's role was to look at Ms. Han's conduct. She lied in Parliament. She then takes the lie forward again on the third of Oct on the fourth of October, and that was the conduct we were looking at. We did not at any point think, and I think there's a good reason why you come at it from a different direction because you have sight of an SMS from Raisa to Paying and Yudish saying that we want to take a lie to the grave. I'm not sure whether Paying is is referring to that knowledge no, because we no, didn't no. have that knowledge. No, and, and let me answer the Mr. question. Mr. Singh, don't speculate. Okay, I, I don't. I, I haven't suggested it, and neither does paying. No, talk well, about that message. We, we can't be sure about so, that. 
We all cannot be sure about all, them. All, she, all she's saying, all she's saying, is that look, the members of the DP were involved themselves. It's only right that the members of the Workers' Party also be aware that you were involved, so that they can make an informed decision. We were not involved in that. We didn't say any lies. We didn't tell any not lies to Parliament. Not and we also were not involved in, to the, in the sense that we encouraged her to lie or to conceal the lie. Not at all. From that perspective, but we saw ourselves as senior members of the party. It's an MP here. We will, uh, we will look at the, the feedback, how people feel about, how members feel about an MP who lies in Parliament, and we'll deal with it and make our recommendations to the CEC who will decide what ought to be done. It, there was never any consideration that, are we uh, muzzling someone? Are we doing something out of the ordinary? What do we know? Uh, by this point, on the 10th, uh, it was quite clear where the party base, I would say, were leaning. And I think being I, I don't need to that. get into that. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to get into that. All, all I'm interested in is in the process. It's your yes, decision. I didn't to find make. the process to be untoward. It's, it's your decision not. to make, right? Yeah. But the process, as Ms. Lowe points out to you, mm -hmm. is flawed. It's, but again... You're I, not transparent, she says. No, well, I can imagine she would say that because I'm not sure whether... She never at any point clarified with me whether we had told her to take the lie to the grave. Is that the knowledge that she's no, referring Ms. to? Mr. Singh, please please don't uh, ascribe to Ms. Lo no, I, any uh, knowledge. I mean, she's no, not No, but she's talking about the knowledge, the party, the party of its knowledge. M Mr. What Mr. is she referring to? Mr. Singh, she is not talking about that message that Ms. Khan had sent her. How do you know? She's not talking about it. Do How you do see, you know? Do you see it here? Do you? Do you see a reference to the fact... Yes. So what is the knowledge that she is referring to? You seem to know what knowledge she is referring to. No. Well, all right. If you want to be specific, we can take you to parts of her submission to you at the DP as well. She made the same points, correct? She made the same points, yes. So my question to you is, why don't you pay any heed to this? Because I didn't see it as relevant. But it you was, didn't... You didn't I, it, it would have been relevant if we indeed wanted her to lie and take no, it to the grave. let me but stop you there. It, it was not you, relevant to you us. You don't say anywhere here to paying that's not relevant. <laughs> uh, Mr. Tong, it, it is what it is. Of course, no, I don't in, say that. In but fact, I have a view. I've, I've put the view out there. Yes, so thank you. You didn't say that. Now, yeah. in fact, this is what you say. Mm -hmm. 10 of November, 12, 11.24 a.m., mm -hmm. paying says, but the DP hasn't exactly told the party of its knowledge and involvement. Yes. Despite that. Yes. You understand the words despite that? The, I, that you you want to ask me what that, I meant by despite that? That is true, yeah. but, correct? Uh, no, no, that's not what I meant. That's nice try, meant. but that's not what I meant. Mr. Singh, I think, let's not play around with language. Despite we, uh, that, that means you accept what she says, Mr. and Paul. even then, it'll be good to hear people Are out. you suggesting on a WhatsApp chat you double-check what you write and read and send and then before you press the send button? Well, I think we all know what despite I think the means. context is quite clear. To me, to me, I found it irrelevant. But you don't that's say why that I said despite that, put that aside. That's no, what I meant. Put that aside means even though the party hasn't told, the, the DP hasn't told the party of its knowledge and involvement, hasn't been transparent, mm -hmm. hasn't come clean, despite that, it's good to the hear The knowledge out. that we knew she lied that knowledge. She lied in Parliament, and this is what the DP is set up for, to find out what ought to be the appropriate course of action that ought to be taken. That's my evidence. Mr. Chairman, shall we take a break now? I, I'm not finished yet, but can, shall we take a break now? Is it okay? We can take a break. Um, Shall we adjourn so that we all can take a... It's been a long day. I think there'll still be a long, many more hours. Ahead. No, I'm happy to. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So let's adjourn. Uh, let's take an hour's break so we can get our thoughts as well. Uh, come back at 6 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. You're welcome.